From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Levanka, and welcome to Studio Bergen, your connection to the state's largest community college. Last month began anything but normally here at Bergen, as the college and the entire metropolitan area continue to reel from the effects of Hurricane Sandy. Due to the storm, the college was closed from Monday, October 29th, and did not reopen until a week later on Monday, November 5th. In addition to classes being canceled, so too were numerous events and activities. All three Bergen locations, Paramus, Hackensack, and Meadowlands, lost power during the storm. Even the Red Cross shelter that was set up at the college in Sandy's Wake was moved due to the college's lack of electricity. But after the missed week of classes, students, faculty, and staff came back to campus with a mission, help Bergen heal. When the college reopened, Bergen students and staff sprung into action, creating a relief campaign to assist those affected by Sandy at the school. The college established a hurricane help center at its main campus where affected individuals could receive access to phones and computers. Hot meals and showers were also provided. Meanwhile, the Student Government Association immediately began accepting donations of basic necessities such as clothing, food, and toiletries to assist in the effort. SGA President Margarita Valdez said the response was quick and the Bergen community was willing to help. Uh, so far it has been great. As you can see, we have a lot of donations, so we're really thankful. And I can say that a lot of people came along to the SGA, so thank you so much for all your support. Due to Sandy's devastation, especially in southern Bergen County, SGA Vice President Michelle Soto said she felt it was important to rally for fellow students. It feels really good. I think any time you're helping out, even though you're helping out just to help out, you get a good feeling inside. I think it pushes you to do more because it feels amazing and we all feel the same way. You feel great helping out and seeing people smile and happy that they have what they need. One of the events knocked out by Sandy was the college's inaugural Big Pick, a multi-pronged day scheduled for October 29th that would have featured an SGA town hall, information on election day, and a panoramic photograph taken from the roof of the Pitkin Education Center. Ultimately, the big pick was rescheduled for November 14th, and I'm happy to report under sunny skies. Faculty, staff, and students gathered between the Student Center and West Hall for the photo as the college's photographer directed the scene from high atop Pitkin. Interim Assistant Dean of Student Life and Judicial Affairs, Nestor Melendez, said the event was about community. The big pick is an attempt to build uh, a bigger sense of community here at Bergen. Uh, we wanted to try to give the students, the faculty, and the staff something fun that uh, could bring them together, lighthearted, frivolous. It's right before the holiday season. Um, and especially after the hurricane, why not uh, have an opportunity to bring as many people as we can together and, and have fun with it? The photo will be hung in the student center with the expectation that the big pick will become a yearly event, hopefully Sandy-free in future years. In news from the Board of Trustees last month, Vice Chair Sid D. Wilson was named the chair of the Association of Community College Trustees Diversity Committee. As part of the one-year term, Mr. Wilson will have voting rights on the 26-member Board of Directors. Mr. Wilson, who is believed to be the first person in the college's 45-year history to serve on the ACCT Board, joined Bergen's board in 2006. From 2007 to 2009, he served as the governing panel's secretary before his 2009 appointment to vice chair. Among his accomplishments and associations, Mr. Wilson was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve on the National Museum of the American Latino Study Commission and has spoken at the White House. He is a life member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and serves on the National Board of Directors for the National Council of La Raza and Latino Justice, P-R-L-D-E-F. From 2004 to 2006, he served as the National President of the Dominican American National Roundtable in Washington, D.C. Also making news this month is a new collaboration between Bergen and William Patterson University. On November 9, Bergen President Dr. B.K. Walter and William Patterson University President Dr. Kathleen Waldron signed a transfer agreement that will allow students to receive a Bachelor of Science degree in business. 
Faculty Senate President Professor Alan Kaufman also attended the signing. Bergen students who complete an Associate of Science degree in Business Administration will be able to transfer up to 70 credits toward the William Patterson Costacos College of Business. Bergen students who earn an Associate of Science degree in Business Administration after January 1, 2005 are guaranteed junior status to William Patterson. The college maintains dozens of these type of agreements with public and private four-year schools both in New Jersey and outside the state. November also featured the college's Veterans Day Recognition Ceremony, a yearly event that brings together Bergen's numerous students, faculty, and staff who have served in the U.S. military. On November 12th, the college's veterans led a procession to the college's American flag near Paramus Road. Before the procession, Professor Rich Cuters discussed the college's support of veterans, not just through words, but through projects and support at Bergen that help vets adjust. But the administration, the staff, and the faculty have instituted the Veterans Initiative to assist our veterans in their transition from the military back into the private life and academia. The college enrolls more than 300 veterans under the post-9-11 GI Bill. One of the most prominent and well-known vets at the college is Professor Mike Eccles, a former Marine who served during the mid-1980s. He's not only the co-advisor to the Bergen's Veterans Club, but also a strong advocate and supporter of many veterans' issues. Appropriate, he is this month's guest in Faculty Focus. Nearly 30 years ago, Lindhurst resident and current Bergen professor Mike Eccles enrolled at the college, unsure of where he was headed. Growing up in Lindhurst, New Jersey, just down the road here, where our Meadowlands campus is, and uh, I didn't realize in the middle of my senior year, you know, I was senior class president, I did the morning announcements, but I'm forgetting about class. Halfway through the semester, I, or halfway through the school year, I realized maybe I should start thinking about college. And I just didn't get it in time. So as my two best friends, who are still my two best friends, as they're going to be roommates at Penn State University, I knew I wasn't ready for the four-year school, so I came to Bergen first to try to maybe just get some college, let's see what it's like, let me have some college classes. But after only one semester at Bergen, Eccles heard a call to arms. So when the spring semester came, I didn't go to register, and I knew that I didn't want to be a burden on my parents. And I had always, in the back of my mind, had always loved um, the idea of being a United States Marine. Well, now it looked like it was the only option of otherwise just picking up odd jobs here and there. Uh, the part-time job I had as a student here, I was only working 15 hours a week, and I just said, you know what? Just like a lot of people here in Bergen County, a lot of people here at this school who have friends and relatives, I walked down the street in Hackensack, just off of Main Street, walked into the recruiter's office, and I said, I'd like to join the United States Marine Corps. After serving in the Marines during the mid-1980s, ultimately, Eccles returned to school poised for success, in large part due to his experiences in the military. I always wanted to go to college. Uh, as a matter of fact, my third day at Marine Corps boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina, I signed the paper to be in the educational assistance program. So that part of my paycheck would go to that. It was always in the back of my mind I was going to go back to college, I was going to do my four years and come back. Uh, and then I realized, although I thought, yeah, I'll probably have focus. Four years later when I was honorably discharged, yes, I did have focus. And I wanted to start from scratch, and that's when I went to uh, Kane University. And uh, in three and a half years, walked out with my bachelor's degree. And uh, it was a real sense of accomplishment. After a successful stint in radio and TV in Indiana, the Lindhurst native returned home. He is now a senior member of the college's communication faculty and an active member of Bergen's Veterans Initiative, helping vets transition to civilian life. What we try to do is just make sure that when they show up, their transition from military life into the collegiate life is as smooth as possible. We want to make sure that when they show up, that they know which classes they need to take, which services they need to get in contact with, so that when they're ready, all they need to do is just go to class. Um, and they've earned that right. 
doing what they're doing, many of them coming back after two, sometimes three tours of Iraq and Afghanistan at 24, 25 years old. They just want to come back, use their GI Bill, get, in, you know, get some college credits, move on with their lives. And they've earned the right for us to come forward, especially as some of us are veterans on the initiative, to make sure that their transition is as smooth as possible. That said, Eccles says it's incumbent upon vets to seek assistance if they need it, just as any other student would do. Seek out all your options, but especially seek help. There are people here, more than there ever have been before, who are ready to help you out if you reach out to them. If you stay silent, nobody knows that we can help you. Seek help, seek all your options. November not only celebrates our veterans like Professor Eccles, but also the fourth Thursday in the month, known every year as, of course, Thanksgiving. Among the projects at the college that aim to celebrate and give thanks is the Horticulture Program's annual Holiday Centerpiece Sale. The decorative, festive pieces are arranged by the department's students, faculty, and staff, who each year help put a little bit of Bergen on Thanksgiving tables throughout the county, according to Professor Steve Fisher. Well, this is one of the things that uh, creates sort of the uh, educational pursuit for many of our students, uh, that they can uh, accomplish something that uh, will be part of a career profession for them. Uh, we're doing the Thanksgiving centerpieces, which are uh, for the staff and uh, faculty on campus at Bergen here. And uh, it gives an opportunity for us to show off some of the talent of our students. The sale supports a scholarship for horticulture students. Coming up after a short break, we'll take a look at some of the other events that made headlines last month and speak with Professor Win Win Chi about Asian Heritage Month and other projects she's working on in this month's In Studio. We'll be right back. The odds of a child becoming a professional golfer? One in 140,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to AutismSpeaks.org. Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Lavanka. Each year, the college's Office of Student Life sponsors two personal enrichment retreats for students, Leadership Weekend in the fall and Diversity Weekend in the spring. Both are intended to enhance skills related to problem solving and building stronger communities. Student leader Alexis Bravo said she learned valuable lessons from this year's program. I think the biggest way to use it here is, you know, to get involved with all the other clubs. I am involved in a lot of clubs, but more to see what ideas they have rather than coming to them and telling them my ideas, asking them if there's anything they need and how they want it to be done. From the next generation of student leaders to the county's senior community, as part of the college's continued mission and vision, the college is committed to educate whomever it can. With that in mind, the College Suburban Studies Group hosted another in its ongoing series of panel discussions, this one, Seniors in Suburbia, Avoiding Senior Scams. The panel, which took place at the Westwood Community Center, featured a discussion on how seniors can avoid falling prey to any number of malicious and unscrupulous insurance, investment, and home repair purveyors. At the event, Eileen Kleinman, the college's director of the Lois E. Marshall Institute for Learning and Retirement, said the need for such education remains critical given the county's demographic profile. Here in Bergen County, we have the largest senior citizen population in the state. And it is only going to grow as the baby boomers continue to age. Currently, one in every seven Bergen County residents is age 65 or older. Meanwhile, in another ongoing series at the college, UN Ambassador Visits, Palitha Kahona of Sri Lanka came to the campus November 19th to meet with students, faculty, and staff. During a lecture with students, Mr. Kahona discussed Sri Lanka and its place in the world. In the United Nations, Sri Lanka has, from the very beginning, played a, a fairly important role. We have got involved in almost every issue that was common to humanity and played a central role. In fact, even today, people will say that Sri Lanka punched way above its weight. We have, just saw that we are a very small island at the tip of India. But we got involved in various issues, and we played a constructive role. 
uh, when the non-aligned movement was formed in the 50s and consolidated in the early 60s, Sri Lanka was there in the middle of it. Former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Shi Chan Siv visited Bergen last month. On the sports page this month, the men's soccer captain Ronaldo Omar Sanchez, a forward, earned all Garden State Athletic Conference and all Region 19 honors. In leading the team with 11 goals, he ranked 15th in the nation. Sanchez was joined by teammate Nick Durate on the all GSAC team. First-year volleyball players Marissa Lortz and Kim Clark were also both named to the all GSAC team. Clark, who made all Region 19 as well, led the team with 15 kills on the year. Sports, specifically golf, were the main topic at the college's Quarterly Connection, a periodic event that brings members of the college, business, and nonprofit community together for networking and a discussion of topical issues. The keynote speaker at the November 13th event, which took place at the Stony Hill Inn, was Alan Kasich, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of the PGA Tour Superstore, which will soon open a branch in Paramus. At the event, he discussed some of the challenges facing the golf industry. The industry is facing, you know, who wants to go out and play golf for five hours if I got all these other things to do? And, and I think that's, you know, although it's a, it's a great game, and what I learned in the game is more important to me, it's allowed me to continue from ethical behavior on the golf course to, to ethical behavior as an accountant all these years. Um, and I think golf just embodies that whole thing. And um, so I think it's, you know, that's the challenge is how do we make it fun and make it a reasonable amount of time to play the game or learn how to play the game. Before we head in studio, let's look at this month's campus calendar. Bergen will host its annual open house for new students Wednesday, December 5th from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Moses Meeting and Training Center at the college's main campus in Paramus. Information will be available on all of the college's programs and student services. Current Bergen students will take the stage with the 1940s Radio Hour production November 30th through December 8th in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater. For show times and seats, visit tickets.bergen.edu. And finally, it is the holidays and bells will be ringing for the Bergen Sinfonia Holiday Concert Saturday, December 15th at 7.30 p.m. in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater. Again, visit tickets.bergen.edu to attend. Welcome to our in-studio segment this month. Today, our guest is Professor Win Win Chi. Uh, Win's been at the college for a long time, so she should be a great guest. Win, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How long have I been at Bergen? Since <laughs> 1987. Let's talk about that. Many of our students were born. So you come to Bergen in 1987. Let's right. talk about uh, how did you get to Bergen in the first place. Actually, um, I I came to the United States in 1985 uh, to do. Uh, to join a young president's organization, which consists of corporate presidents. Mm -hmm. And I was the director of events. And in 1987, young presidents went from New York headquarters to Texas. And as a non-driver, I can't imagine living in Texas. That even though I was told that I would be driven to work, back to work and, and back and forth from work, I decided that Texas wasn't my thing. So I stayed on in New Jersey. So what am I going to do? So I went to Rutgers and I was an adjunct professor there. I started as an adjunct. What did you teach? English. English, yes. okay. And yes. then you come to Rutgers and then Bergen and, Community College. And Bergen Community College. I am a great believer in community college. I believe that uh, you know our uh, gift to the world, i.e. democracy, uh, some people may question it, but I, I have no uh, doubt that our better gift to the world is the essence and presence of community colleges. So obviously you come to Bergen and yes. now 25 years later uh, you've done a lot here. Uh, in addition to teaching you also serve as counselor to students. Let's talk a little bit about your experiences with all that. Well I actually started as an international student counselor. Um, I was an international student a thousand years ago and so I, I was there. I was on the other side of the table. And then um, when I came to Bergen, um, there was an opening for an international student counselor full time. And then so I started working with uh, Dr. John Georgiatis. We were the team. And then later on, a uh, long time ago, uh, international students were very much part of what is now called the student, uh, Center for Student Success. 
and uh, we were very much part of it. And it was time as the, the number of international students on F1 visa grew mm -hmm. uh, steadily and, um, and amazingly. It was time to, to, to give them a, a center where their special needs uh, can be delivered and mobilized. So the International Student Center was, was founded and then um, I worked in it. And then later on, uh, my life at Bergen morphed <laughs> into programming uh, and uh, then uh, back to where I have been since 1987 essentially. Well, let's talk about the international students. You talk about kind of how it's changed maybe from, from 1987 until now, 25 years. Um, what is it like for an international student? Um, perhaps they, they've never been to the United States uh, and they're coming to Bergen Community College to uh, educate themselves. What is that experience like? That experience can be amazing and it can also be daunting mm. because many of us come from uh, the world where you know you saw America uh, through um, Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the idea uh, that uh, you know there is uh, the roads are paved with gold, and and that life was you know live happily ever after. Many of us are not prepared to the world uh, that awaits us, uh, a world which is full of freedom, and yet you know freedom is not free. Mm -hmm. Freedom can be lonely. And, and many of them, um, even just survival issue, um, how do you do your own laundry? How do you cook eggs? How do you make breakfast? Simple things that other people may not think about becomes an issue. Uh, I think um, one of the greatest uh, challenges is how do you handle freedom mm -hmm. uh, now that you don't have your parents telling you when to, to study and when to sleep and when to do your homework. Especially so in, a in a different thousands country, thousands of miles thousands from home. Thousands of miles. So loneliness becomes uh, an issue with many of them. Although I no longer work uh, with international students on F1 visa, because now I'm with the Center for Student Success, um, I, I share their pain, I, I understand their pain. So I think that it's very important that um, they learn uh, the true essence of what it is to, to enjoy freedom uh, and that understanding that freedom is responsibility. So you, you said, and that was a great segue, because you say you don't exactly work with all of the international students anymore, but you do work with students quite a bit. Uh, let's talk about what you do uh, for students these days. Okay. Um, I work with mainstream students, and of course, in mainstream students, you also have students that may not be on uh, necessarily uh, on F1 visa, but you also have non-immigrant uh, visa students. That is uh, a... a, a, a an incredible uh, segment also. Um, students uh, at Bergen are very diverse, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, in, the, in the sense that they come from different uh, ethnicity, from different countries, uh, speaking different languages, having lived different unique uh, uh, background and, and upbringing. But then they also bring into to Bergen the, the glory of uh, a community college, mm -hmm. which is accessible, excellent, uh, and um, and fulfilling their needs. Um, many of them, um, unless you your father's name is Trump, <laughs> most of us have issues paying the tuition. Mm -hmm. I mean, gone are the days when Bergen Community College's uh, one credit costs five dollars. Right. It's no longer so. So students, uh, you know, I work with mainstream. Um, I have been serving on the academic standing committee which deals with students' requests to change E grades to W grades, mm -hmm. and also students that are reinstated. And then also, um, in, in, in addition to my job as an, uh, as an academic counselor, I'm also a co-advisor serving um, uh, in Phi Theta Kappa with Dr. Ellen Phi. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I work with Academic Standing Committee, which deals with students that have been reinstated uh, from suspension and... Um, dismissal and giving them a second life. So what I love about Bergen is the essence of giving all of us a second life, if not a third life, to do well academically, socially, and um, professionally. It's interesting to hear you talk about kind of the, the full range of spectrum. You're dealing with students maybe in some cases that are at risk, but you also serve as the PTK advisor, which yes. uh, for anybody that doesn't know, PTK is the honor society of two-year uh, schools. So um, that's really the top of the top. I kind of talk about those kids and those experiences, um, how to tailor um, what you do uh, for them. So my, my dream, my another additional dream, is to see how we can better serve 
uh, the, ex the, the two spectrum. Because in many ways, uh, those uh, ad academically at risk students can, are prospective Phi Theta Kappa students. Right. And God forbid that our Phi Theta Kappa students can also downgrade themselves into being at risk. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it, you, know, you know, it's like love and war. There's a very <laughs> thin line between uh, uh, being academically excellent and academically in distress. Sure. So I, my, my hope is, is to work with those that are at risk. Uh, to me, who is at risk? I think that if you have an average of 2.5, mm -hmm. you are academically at risk. Because, and you know, and, and then, so my, my hope is that eventually I, I would morph my life academic uh, contribution to, to work, to bring these two groups together mm -hmm. and then uh, assisting each other, helping each other. What are some of the things you do to kind of uh, bridge that gap between the two groups? Um, Phi Theta Kappa has four pillars. One is um, scholarship, mm -hmm. uh, leadership, fellowship, and service. So I am, uh, you know, for instance, uh, we are doing, um, for the past two years, Commit to Complete, mm -hmm. which is a national call for, for community colleges to commit. So I'm, I'm, I, I want to expand it to, the, to those students who are at risk and then maybe uh, have, a, 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 you know, a, an email blast, you know, like, uh, to for them to commit themselves to commit mm -hmm. uh, to complete. So you know, you know, you know, in life, right? When you write something, then mm -hmm. it becomes real. That's right. For instance, when Benita Bhutto, uh, uh, when she was 33, her friend asked her to write a book. She said, "I'm only th 33. I, maybe I can have three chapters." And her best friend from Harvard told Benita Bhutto that whatever is not written is forgotten. So this commit to complete is. Um, um, you know, on this big grand um, piece of cloth, we write down that we commit ourselves to completion of college because we know that when you when you complete uh, at least uh, associate degree, you fare f further and much better in, in every aspect of your life. Absolutely, and there's more of a uh, opportunity to go to a four-year school and then possibly yeah. graduate degrees and yes. etc. But kind of to tie this uh, all together as we're about to wrap up here, um, for all of the work that you've been in, uh, involved in here at Bergen, uh, you just won a pretty prestigious award. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit and um, you know how you got it and, and what that emotion is like for you. When um, I was selected as one, uh, as one of the it's a national award, uh, uh, a state award, uh, as one of the best counselors. Um, I am going to be awarded that on November 30th, and I humbly accept it, not for win-win the person or the professor, but win-win the counselor. I think that this award uh, was bestowed, will be bestowed upon me, not for win-win the individual, but uh, one of the counselors. I think that uh, being a counselor is one of the best positions in the world, where you are one-on-one -on -one with, with your students. Um, you not only get into the academic success, but you grow with them into the professional and personal and emotional uh, journey. So I accept it uh, humbly mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of my colleagues, and, uh, and uh, I'm thankful to, uh, assist, uh, to Dean Jennifer Reyes for having nominated me. I think it's clear to anybody watching that kind of that philosophy that you bring with you uh, is one of the reasons that you uh, won this award uh, because you do care about the students and you do want to um, help them uh, through this process. A thousand years ago, Larry, um, I was asked in my philosophy class at the age of 19, uh, no more than 10 words, what is your philosophy of life? And my philosophy then, when I was 19 and now, is love people, use things, not use people and love things. I am a great lover of life and not of things. It's good advice, folks. It's all the time we have for this month. Don't forget to visit the college's official Facebook page to tell us what you think about this program. And thank you to Wynn for being thank here. Thank you very much, Larry, for having me and for Bergen Air. I'm Larry Levanka. Thanks and take care.